Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Wix, a free web building site that allows you to make your own website, whether you're an individual or a company. Wix has all the tools you need to build yourself a gorgeous site. Click on the link below and register for a free account and use the Wix website builder to make yourself a beautiful website in five easy steps. Big thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be making DIY natto. Here are my beans that are soaking. So let me step back a little bit and talk about natto. Natto are fermented soybeans that are eaten in Japan. And through the fermenting process, the beans develop a gooey, stretchy, cobwebby like texture around them. So I was actually inspired to make this years and years and years ago, back when I was living in Japan, when I saw an old YouTube video of this old bacha and this sweet little old lady making natto and she would make it in paper cones and then she wrapped the whole thing in blankets a big pile of blankets like a little baby tucked in and allowed the beans to ferment to develop those lovely strings so ever since i saw that video i knew i wanted to make natto but i'm just getting around to it now so in my research to find the perfect natto recipe i discovered natto dad i'll put his link to his channel and also to his blog down below and he has a very very clear and thorough instructions on how to make homemade natto i'm going to put a little spin on things because i'm going to be using this and this is an instapot and if you follow me on social media at all, you saw that I went and purchased this recently at Target for this recipe and for some other concoctions because I want to really see what this thing can do. Apparently an Instapot cooks with pressure, so it's a combination slow cooker, pressure cooker, cooker. And so I wanted to see if it would work for this application. I'm gonna use it to both cook the beans and to ferment the beans. Enough yapping, let's go ahead and get started. So first I got this two pound bag of dried soybeans. And then I rinsed them in a colander really well and picked out any ones that didn't look perfect. And then after washing them, I placed them into a bowl with lots and lots of water and allowed them to soak. So not the dad instructs that he likes a long soaking period. In the summertime, it's slightly shorter, anywhere from 12 to 18 hours. In the wintertime, it's gonna be extended, gonna be more like 24 hours. The beans are ready when you start seeing these little bubbles on top. This is the IP Duo. I bought this at Target for about $100. Now, you hear that? So it says off and it sings a little song to me. Remove the lid. Here's the stainless steel insert. I've already washed this. And place that back into there. So what Natto Dad does is he has a large capacity pressure cooker and he steams under pressure. But the Instapot has a steaming option, but that is not under pressure. So that would still take hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it under pressure. It has a bean option right here. It has soybeans listed and it says 18 to 20 minutes. Fill this up with my beans, water to cover. I'm gonna switch it to sealing because I'm gonna be cooking under pressure. And then I'm pushing the bean option, high pressure, and cook it for 20 minutes. And then it should start. All right, so now it's on. And now in 20 minutes, we'll see if the beans are ready. So I'm back, it's been 20 minutes, and now let's check on our beans and see if they are cooked. I should also say that when they say 20 minutes, that is the cooking time. That does not include the time it takes for the Instapot to get to pressure. I would say that would be an additional 10 minutes or so. When the timer went off after 20 minutes, I did a manual venting and I allowed the steam to vent so I could open this up. I should say that <laughs> it got steam and water everywhere. There's a method where you can allow it to naturally decompress and just let the Instapot cool down. And then you can do a venting, a partial kind of venting. I think that's what I would do next time to avoid kind of the steamy boil over thing that I had happen. So I'm gonna turn this dial to this way and makes that cute little sound. And there are the beans. Let's see if these are cooked. The beans should just kind of squish and they do, perfect. So I'm gonna reserve some of this cooking water, take the beans to the sink and drain them. And now we're supposed to let these cool down for 20 minutes before we inoculate them with the natto. Now this is regular natto and this is how it comes. It comes usually in three or four styrofoam trays. And what we do is we're gonna use this as the seed. If you haven't seen my how to eat natto video, I'll put the link up there and down below, and you can see how to prepare natto typically for breakfast. And it comes with a little seasoning packet and a little spicy mustard. We're not gonna use that. We're gonna take this plastic off. So this is frozen, and typically when you buy this in Japan, they're in the refrigerated section. And now we're just gonna cut this into 
nine pieces. We're just gonna take one of those. Another thing that we wanna do is make sure we sterilize the dish in which we're going to ferment the beans in. So you can use a bleach method or boiling water method. Add one tablespoon of bleach to your container, fill that with water and allow that to soak, and do the same for your spoons that you're gonna be using. And then we're gonna rinse that completely to make sure everything is nice and sterile. Okay, so now that the beans have been cooling for about 15 to 20 minutes, we are ready now to inoculate it with the natto starter. Here is my sanitized glass dish. Now I'm gonna add some beans. And now I'm gonna take my little square of natto and use my sterilized spoon. I'm gonna bury this inside here. Cover the beans up. I want to allow the frozen beans to kind of soften up a bit. We're also gonna add a couple tablespoons of the cooking liquid to this to moisten the beans. Mix that well and make sure that all of the beans get a little bit of that inoculant. Now we're gonna take some plastic wrap, stretch it pretty tightly, and then take a toothpick and prick the surface. This will allow it to breathe but also retain some moisture. Then we're gonna release it from the sides and press this to the surface of the beans. Now we're gonna repeat this with a second layer of plastic wrap. And this one we're gonna keep tight. And then again, poke it with our toothpick. Love that sound. Now I'm gonna add a cup of hot water and then use the steam rack. Place that in the bottom. Place my natto inside, put the lid on, close, yogurt on less, and then I'm gonna set it for 16 hours. I'm gonna put it at 16 and a half hours. So while my beans are incubating, let me tell you a little bit more about Wix. So Wix is a web building site that allows you to make a beautiful website, whether you're an individual or a business, if you need a place to put your menus, your artwork, or have an e-commerce site, Wix gives you options and the tools you need. So Wix does all the heavy lifting for you. They have reliable hosting so your site remains safe and secure. Click on the link below and register for a free account and use the Wix website builder to make yourself a beautiful website in five easy steps. Big thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. Now let's check on the beans. So thrilled about this. I've been wanting to make natto myself for so many years and I'm so happy that the day is here. Here is my bowl of natto. Let me walk you through the steps of what I did afterwards. Then initially I put it on the less setting of yogurt and I checked the temperature and it was around 95 degrees but I noticed that it was cooling and the natto needs to incubate about 100 degrees. So what I did was I increased it to the normal temperature in Inside the Instapot was about 105 degrees. So then I let it sit for another eight hours and then I started seeing some of the culture start to develop. And Natto Dad calls this a halo, where you get this kind of white fuzziness that is around each bean. And I started noticing that after eight hours. So I did an additional another eight hours. Total incubation time for this particular batch was 24 hours. Had I not used the lower temperature initially, I think the incubation time probably would have been reduced more like 18, 16 hours. I should also mention you don't need an Instapot, of course, to make this recipe. Not though that instructs that you can actually do the incubation in your oven. You can use a hot plate and a thermostat to regulate the temperature. I tried using my heat lamp from my brooder box when I was raising my chickens. I'll put links to my chicken videos. But that was a little bit too hot. The oven was about 125 degrees, so too hot for incubating. Another technique I've seen is using a heating pad and lots of blankets. That's actually the original video I saw. I'll put that link down below as well. I imagine you can also use a sous vide, but anything that can maintain a temperature of 100 degrees for an extended period of time will work. So after the incubating for 24 hours, I took the beans out and let them sit at room temperature for a few hours, let them cool off, and then I placed it into the refrigerator. And I've let these sit in the fridge for a couple of days. So Natal Dad recommends three to five days. He says the flavors mellow out a little bit. They're not as strong. So here we are today. I can't wait to taste it. And here, can you see that? You can see the signature stringy, cobwebby surface of the natto beans. Look at this. Yes. This is exactly what you want. Look at those strings. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, so happy about that. Look at those strands. Take a portion of my beans and place them into a bowl. 
I'm gonna whip them up. And you whip it and whip it and whip it. And this develops the slime. It whips it up and gets these really gooey strands. Love this. So Natto Dad says that his test for a really good batch of natto is that he whips the beans up and then he adds shoyu, which is soy sauce. And he says if the strands are maintained and it stays nice and gooey, then he knows it's a good batch. So let's test mine. Instead of shoyu, I'm using this. It's called tuyu and it comes in a couple different forms and it's basically concentrated soup base. I love this. This is what I use to season my natto. Just a tiny bit. It goes a long way. It's very concentrated. Just a couple drops. And whip that up and let's see if my natto is up to snuff. So whip that around and yep, it looks just as gooey as ever. Now I've got my rice and I'm gonna pour my beans on top. Now oh, it smells great. It smells a little bit cheesy, nutty, beany, ricey. <laughs> that lovely smell of cooked rice. Now I'm gonna to top it with some green onion. Oh yep. Now that, that really does it right there. Finally, finally, I've been waiting days for this. Let's give this a taste. All right, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Delicious, absolutely delicious. The beans are soft and tender. They have a great natto flavor, which is slightly bitter, a little bit cheesy, full of natto flavor that's pungent and just delicious. The little bit of suyu that's in there gives it a little bit of saltiness, a little bit of umami. You've got the green onions on there that brighten things, give you a little bit of crunch. And then of course you have rice, which is, you know, your means of delivery. Lovely, 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 lovely. A cracked egg would make this even better. My chickens will be 20 weeks old tomorrow. So I should be getting fresh eggs very soon. And once I do, I'm gonna have fresh eggs cracked right on top of this, just raw on my rice with my natto beans. Absolutely scrumptious. Mm-hmm. Mm. This twirling breaks those kind of cobwebby strands. So you just twist your chopsticks around and it breaks the strands because the strands are pretty tenacious. They go on and on and on and on and on. So you use your chopsticks to kind of break up the strands. Mm. Delicious. So stinking good. Love this. This is going to be my lunch right here. Mm. So for this entire batch of natto, which is almost a pound, it was about $3. I paid $3 for the beans and then I paid maybe 25 cents for the natto to inoculate. And of course I did use some energy to make everything. So maybe let's say $3 and 50 cents for a pound of natto beans, super economical, fresh, tasty, delicious. If you're a natto head, try this. It's delicious. It's fun and it's cheap. Big thanks to natto dad for putting those thorough, thorough instructions. He has all kinds of tips and tricks. Check his website out. I'll put the link down below. Big thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. Head over to Wix.com and see how you can build yourself a beautiful website. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. It really helps me out. Follow me on social media, subscribe, like this video, and I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>